five kudo points to the first person that can guess where we're starting off the video today. And if you guessed Yashio Factory, where is it? There it is. Um, it's not that hard, it's kind of the routine, right? I mean, I'm not an employee here, but I'm practically here every day filming because why not, right? Uh, no, but in all seriousness, I love it here. And uh, I am getting so much experience and learning so much working here alongside Okachan. And obviously him being one of my biggest sponsors with building the S15 and all that kind of stuff, just makes sense to be here every day and uh, shooting some epic content. So that being said, I wanna show you the SR20 that Fukuzawa-san just finished putting together. In the last few videos, I've kind of been showing you that, you know, his progress as he went along rebuilding that engine. He's also currently working on the 2.2-stroked uh, the um, HKS S15 there. We'll get a look at that because a bunch of things have been changed on that. Um, but let me show you this SR. And as you guys can see, the SR is completely back together and ready to go up into this thing, which currently has no engine in there. But some things I want to really highlight to you guys and show you this thing is uh, it, it blows my mind actually, but look how good and pretty that looks. You're seeing all those marks on every single little bolt everywhere. Like, look at that. There ain't no way that anything's been missed on this. Uh, he still hasn't talked down the, um, uh, the studs and the bolts on the exhaust manifold. He's going to do that once he gets it in, but thing looks awesome. So this is a pretty uh, simple upgrade, but all these things are Yashio factory parts and the intake pipe, super big deal. Um, on the factory uh, ones, they have this rubber one that like sucks clothes and stuff once you start building a bit more boost on them. Uh, Yashio factory exhaust manifold there for better flow. And as I did point out previously, this was one of the ones that Nissan should have recalled with the bad manufactured exhaust manifold because they just break and snap right off on the fourth runner. So there's that. Intake pipe, we already kind of covered that. There'll also be a really nice, beautiful stainless steel downpipe, el turbo outlet elbow coming off that. But after, uh, otherwise, it's also got an aftermarket HKS head gasket. All the kind of like, I guess like, si like keep it simple kind of mods that you should always do to an SR. I also love that this owner has a Nismo sticker up the top there. It's obviously got the HKS cam kit in there, I think step one. Pretty sick. So that's all back together and probably next week, actually probably I'd say tomorrow this thing will be back in there. You see the owner's a big fan of Nismo because he's got an, another Nismo badge there and there's a few more all over the car. But anyways, there's that. And then I want to show you what's happening with this. So as you guys know, this used to be a pre previously used to be an FD car. It's not an FD car, a D1 car. It was used in D1 GP. The guy never really got past qualifying. So never really got like thrashed and bashed. And it used to have that super big HKS T04Z on it which we just listed up on Yahoo Auctions. This little big kit here, look at that. So, uh, pretty cool. Um, but obviously we're not gonna run NOS, we're not gonna run a big turbo that's super laggy. We went for Okachan's YP Turbine, the brand new ones. So that's gonna spool. It's gonna make about 500 horsepower total as our goal. Now, the cams that came in this, for some reason, were HKS Step 3s with one of the biggest things that ruins SRs, rocker stoppers. You don't put these on. Um, Okachan swears that, like, well, it's not just that he, he says that, he's proven it, and it's been proven more and more and more. Every time you break a rocker or a rocker slips off, if you have rocker stoppers, what it does is it jams the rocker in there and it snaps things and sends metal shards through everything and breaks and ruins a lot more stuff. If you have rocker stoppers not in there, the rocker will just fall out and just kind of freely sit there and not get caught in the way and break a lot and damage a lot of things. But anyway, so rocker stoppers are bad. Generally, don't spend money on that. Spend your money elsewhere. It's a waste of 60 bucks to 120 bucks, whatever you pay, whatever brand you get. Anyways. The cams that were in here, they deleted NVCS, the VCT, um, and they just had adjustable cams with Step 3 HKS cams. Not a good cam to run, um, and definitely not a good cam to run if you don't have NVCS, if you don't have VCT, if you don't have variable cam timing, there's no point in even running them. So anyways, we downgraded the cams to Step 2, which make a lot more better power, and uh, we obviously put MVCS gear, and, well, the, the VCT gear back on the front there, got rid of the adjustable cam on this side because you just don't need it. Um, and now, Kusawa-san has a huge pain in the ass job of having to re-add a new harness just for the VCT solenoid. So the guy's deleted it, chopped it off, so he's got a, he's just pulled it through the, the firewall there, that's what he's got there, and he's gonna run it to the, the solenoid there. And then, Okajan's gotta set it all up 
Um, the main reason why a lot of people who, when they go for the aftermarket V, uh, like V Pro, the HKS ECU, this thing here, the FCON, um, a lot of people in Japan just don't even bother with uh, VCT because it's actually really hard to set up the FCON ECU. It's kind of like a, it's so weird because it's a piggyback system that works off the factory one. It's a huge pain in the butt, but, it, but if you know what you're doing, you can get it to work um, and it is very difficult to set up. Uh, another thing is, uh, there's a lot of things on this car though that the complexity of it was just really strange. They're using RB26 uh, SARD injectors. So they actually added, if I use this light here, they added uh, the injector resistor for them. Because if you know RB26 is usually the resistor there, there's just a lot of interesting things. It's like, why wouldn't you just go and use different injectors? But uh, Japanese people, they like using all the, you know, the, those old kind of parts and things like that off different engines and things. And they make all these things super complicated to adapt them to work. I don't know, I'm kind of ranting on, but it's just super nostalgic and interesting to me that they still do that kind of stuff because for us like in Australia in the States, you know, we got dynos in practically every performance workshop and we got different aftermarket ECUs that make things so much more simpler and easier to set up. You know, we don't even play around with HKS F-Cons, I think, uh, in Western culture. So it's just interesting seeing how Japanese people adapt and tuners and stuff and how they do it. Like I think Okachan's method of still tuning and, and flashing the factory ECU up until you want to go over 500 horsepower is super valid, saves the customer so much money and you just don't need it. Like why over, why over complicate something in the engine bay when you just don't need it, you know what I mean? Like especially uh, unless you know, you're wanting to do drag racing or crazy drifting and build a 600 horsepower car, then it's like, yeah, sure, go to aftermarket. Like why spend two to three grand on aftermarket ECU stuff when uh, you're still running factory internals on your, you know, your engine, like, it just doesn't make sense logically, right? So I think that's that's one bit of like uh, advice, I guess, or something that we should change in Western culture with how we build our cars. We definitely overbuild them, especially for si simple seat time stallions. That's a fact. But anyways, this thing's super cool. It's D1 spec cage and everything, so this thing can go into comps. It'd be interesting if this ends up becoming my future like proper comp car. But uh, I don't know, we'll see. It's gonna be a rental car before then, that's for sure. But uh, it's just caged out and perfect for it. So it wouldn't, I wouldn't have to build mine to the same spec and weld it all in if I could just get this car as well. But I'm just talking out of my butt right now. <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna see what else is going on. Gonna, oh, John's got a bit of a meeting right now with some guys from HKS. So we'll wait till that finishes up and then we'll do some more cleaning over there. But I figured uh, you guys would like a little bit more of an in-depth look of this S15. I know a lot of you guys have been asking for a look at this customer's S13 up here. We'll look at that once it's down. And I uh, hope you guys also enjoyed the update on that. There's some cool stuff happening with this thing. So we've pretty much finished with everything engine bay side. You can see we now got the, the plug on the solenoid. And uh, fukusawa is just finishing tidying up that part of the harness there. And then we've got the trigger wire for the solenoid. That we've run through into the cabin here. And we're gonna end up splicing that directly into where it needs to go to the ECU, which is not a big deal. We'll uh, obviously tidy that up and run some sheathing or something over that as well. But uh, hopefully we'll have VCT working by the end of the day. That would be super cool. This brake bias kit is pretty insane. Looks cool. So many cool parts in this car. I still can't get over how clean this place is now. It's ridiculous. We're gonna end up getting rid of this too. This will probably go and get picked up and go to the dump, but there's so much space here. It almost looks like something's missing. Look at it all. Oh man, if any of you guys have actually been here, you'll know what this place was like previously. We hanged up his two of his race suits there and we're gonna keep hanging up more like along there that he doesn't use anymore because it'll look super cool. And uh, we got a bunch of the product all here. We still got more to get all sorted out and we definitely wanna do something like kind of cool through here as well, maybe with the shirts and stuff, like another, so I don't know, something to hang them up on. But uh, I think the next thing that we're definitely gonna tackle with cleaning and stuff is, I think we're planning for like a whole bunch of us to come over and we're gonna tackle the second floor. That's a disaster. It looks like a bomb hit that of 10 years of hoarding. <laughs> we'll sort that out. Um, and then we've gotta do that back corner and all in the back there. Um, and then tidy up this whole section here too, all the way along this wall. There's brand new toolboxes and stuff here that Okachan's had for like two, three years now that he hasn't unboxed. These big boxes are here all brand new toolboxes. So uh, we'll go through and clean out all of that there too, get things organized, but that'll happen probably within a month's time. For now though, 
Fukusawa san's finished with this We've done all the wiring the vct solenoids all hooked up we can't fire it up though and do any testing until the cover comes back um, the rocker cover that was on here has a few fittings welded on there an fittings stuff like this for the breathers and whatnot and uh the other covers that we have here don't have that and it was sent away to get uh the really nice pink uh special coating on there that okachan does and sells so waiting for that to come back that'll probably come back this weekend and then we'll be able to fire this thing up and okachan will start tuning it and getting everything calibrated and set up so that uh, the vct works with the fcom pro there's a whole bunch of yeah anyways I'm still wondering if uh, I can convince Okachan to get the nozzle hooked up just for some fun. This is going to be a rental car for you guys to use, um, as well as anyone else that obviously wants to rent one of Okachan's cars to uh, go drifting here in Japan and not actually pay to buy a car to go drifting over here. So he's setting up pretty much, getting a whole bunch of cars ready for uh, to essentially start like a drift rental service kind of thing here, which is going to be super sick. You've kind of heard me talking about it a little bit, but. It'd be sick if we could switch on the NOS whenever we wanted to play with the car and have some fun because it's all set up, ready to go. It's got the purge system. This little thing here purges out into the wheel well and uh, that's where the fun stuff goes into the intake. So, I don't know. it will be cool. He's got two big bottles full of NOS over there too that he still hasn't used. So worst case scenario, if we don't use NOS on any of his cars, I definitely will try to get another EK Civic over here and put NOS on it because that'll be fun. No ASMR coffee time today, but ASMR Coke time. I'm a big fan of... Uh, buying and drinking coke out of cans uh, if any of you guys in the comment sections agree with me here but i feel like canned coke is crispier and colder and tastes better than a pet bottle i don't know am i the only one that thinks that mm. <sighs> something about coke that just does it for me anyways i gotta jump on the road we gotta head back we got lots of stuff to do tomorrow so i need to get to bed early even though i overslept today and got to the workshop super late we got what we needed which was a four point harness for one of you guys who placed an order we got a whole bunch more stock so if any of you guys want some four point harnesses head to the website takugarage.com.au and get yourself one they all come with these here which is what goes you only need one of these which goes on the inside of the tunnel where the tail shaft is to bolt in the rest of the harness but i'll show you the four points so you can get a good look at them that's them there absolutely beautiful and i can't recommend them enough for anyone who drives because they just stand out and the yashio factory logo is also pretty sexy so support yashio factory and get yourself a harness they're a little bit pricey i know for harnesses but they're obviously up to date and they don't expire until 2024 so you got plenty of life in them and they're all fia certified all that jazz so you can use them in competition and they're really nice and thick too so they pretty much meet all the standards and they come with everything you need to install them so can't complain all right well it was a few fun hours at yashio factory okachan uh, after he finished with hks then uh, ended up going out for a meeting with the guys at nismo so uh, he's pretty busy today so obviously i'm gonna head home um but I've got the stuff i need to send out for uh customers orders and whatnot anyways i still hope you guys enjoyed this video obviously not a whole bunch went on today uh just being a couple hours at yashio factory and whatnot but we still got vct working on the 2.2 hk stroked s15 that's a that's a mouthful well we just got vct working on a car uh, on an s15 that previously didn't have it uh we can't start up the engine though but we were triggering the solenoid with the ecu so that we know it's working um but uh, yeah we can't start it up till the new rocker cover comes in and then after that um i think next week Okachan's going to be tuning that so we'll be able to film a bunch of that and get that thing uh running really nice and going for some pulls i'm really excited and interested in how that car's going to handle because we've changed a lot on there and it used to be set up for just race gas only like ethanol um which is it's not e85 it's like way more higher concentrated and all that stuff here and it's like 300 dollars for 20 liters of it so it's like a, a one barrel is like 300 bucks and that's what that car used to run on actually a lot of a lot of like d1 cars run that like daigo saito all of his cars run that gas it's it's absolutely insane um but anyways all that being said i'm pretty interested to see what power figures it's gonna be and all that kind of stuff so uh, i'm not sure if okachan's gonna street tune that or if he's uh 
going to go to HKS and use their dyno packs or anything like that. Uh, they've got a really nice hub dyno there that he uses from time to time. Anyways, I had a really good day. Hope you guys did too. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And uh, check out some other videos on the channel. Also, we just hit 92K. It's it's insane. 100K is right around the corner. So uh, if you guys are all the way watching to the end, my favorite group of people, um, you know what you need to do. Share some videos. Tell some more friends about the, the channel. Get them on board. Um, I'm so excited. Once we hit 100K, like the next one after that, I guess, is 500K and then a million. It's it's insane. Either way, I'm so excited and I hope you guys are too because we've come a long way. And with that, thanks for watching. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe again. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out. Jamata.